Hello, beloved. This is Pastor Whipple from the historic Mount Hebron Baptist Church, and I want to officially welcome you to online worship. Whether you're viewing us live or on a replay, thank you for joining us on today. We invite you to share this video on Facebook, share it on our YouTube page, and always go to our website, mounthebron.org. Now, either during this broadcast or at the conclusion, I invite you to sow into this ministry. Find us on Cash App. Our cash tag is dollar sign M O U N T. H-E-B-R-O-N, number two, number six, number five, number one, or follow us on Givelify at the historic Mount Hebron Baptist Church. Either way you're joining us today, thank you again for joining us. Share this video and get strength for your journey. Be blessed.
people praise him, let the people praise him, let the people rejoice. Don't you stand, hold the stand, hold this great house on open the door, open the door this great Sunday morning, hymn number 211, hymn number 211 in your red hymn note, I'm leaning on the everlasting arm, hymn number 211, hymn number 211 in your red hymn note, leaning on the everlasting arm, let's stand, hold on to this great house, and let's sing it to the glory of God. Father God, we only grab on 
to your everlasting arms, Father God. We will have the strength, Father God. You said in your word you would never leave us, Father God, nor forsake us, Father God. David said that I was young, Father God, and now I'm old, Father God. We have seen, Father God, through your record book, all the mighty things that you can do, Father God. So we come here today, Father God, this morning, with expectation, Father God, knowing that you will, Father God, provide for us, Father God, knowing that you will strengthen us, knowing that you will encourage us, Father God, knowing that you will inspire and motivate, Father God, and let us know that everything, Father God, that everything, Father God, everything, everything is going to be all right, Father God. So we praise your name knowing that Monday through Saturday, you got our back, Father God, when the newscast gets some news on Monday. We know we can go into our prayer closet, Father God, and praise your name, Father God, when something crazy happens on Tuesday through Friday. We thank God that we have the strength of you, Father God, in carrying us in through the week, Father God. So we praise you right now, Father God, and we just say thank you. Thank you, Father God, that our children are still safe right now, Father God. Thank you, Father God, that we have made it to another day in 2023, Father God. Thank you, Father God, for helping me take one foot and place it in front of another every single day, Father God. Some people don't know just how hard it is, Father God, to pull ourselves out of bed in the morning, Father God. Some people don't know that before we got here, Father God, a spirit came at us, Father God, trying to keep us from this house, Father God, knowing that if we could get here, Father God, all that we need is in this house, Father God. So I thank you, Father God, for those that pressed their way, Father God. I thank you, Father God, for those that showed up, Father God, in spite of the situation, Father God, in spite of the circumstance, Father God. We thank you right now, Father God, because we know when we leave out of here, we will be empowered, Father God. So we praise your name for continuously, Father God, uplifting us. And it's in your precious Son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Patrick, you deserve. Stand with me, stand with me, stand with me. You deserve. Tell him, tell him, tell him. You deserve, you deserve. For the fruit of your lips, for the fruit of your lips today, you deserve. For every mountain he brought you over, tell him you deserve. For every valley he saw you through, to tell you deserve, you deserve. For healing my body, tell you deserve, you deserve. For keeping a roof over my head, tell God you deserve, you deserve. For keeping my family together, you deserve, you deserve. Somebody says what he says, for keeping me in my right mind. You deserve all the glory. You deserve all the honor. You deserve all the praise. Every head bowed, every eye closed, let's pray. Father God, in the blessed name of Jesus, yes, yes, yes. we come to you in prayer, thanking you for this opportunity to say you deserve it all because you've given us so much. You deserve it all because you've given us so much. Now, Father God, it is with humility and grace that we come into your presence another day. We come into your sanctuary with a mouth to worship and a heart to praise and a mindset to serve. Now, God, I thank you for the sacred space called Mount Hebron. I thank you for you haven't stopped blessing us yet. Now, God, we can declare your people are hurting and we need to hear a word from you. We can declare that we're going through some things. And we need you, Lord God, to bless us publicly. But we're going through privately. Now, God, now, God, have your way like you never had before. But we can't we'll give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Clap your hands right here. While you're standing, while you're standing, meet me at John chapter 1. Meet me at John chapter 1 in the New Testament. John chapter 1. As we are highlighting on the road to the resurrection and what happened after the resurrection. Uh, understand, we always get excited, and rightfully so, about what happened leading up to the resurrection and what happened when he got up. But don't you know there are some responsibilities of the believer? There are some responsibilities of the yes, believer yes, yes. that we got to do after the resurrection. Yes, yes. So meet me at John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Verse number 6. John chapter 1, verse number 6. All the way to please stand for reading God's holy word. John chapter 1. Beginning in verse 6, concluding in verse 13. New King James Version says this. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for witness to bear witness of the life and all through him might believe. He was not of that life but was sent to bear witness of that life. That, that, that was the true light which gives light to every person coming into the world. Verse 10, he was in the world. And the world was made through him. And the world did not know him. He came, he came to his own, and his own did not receive him. King James verse says, receive him not. But, but as many as received him, to them he gave, watch this y'all, the right to become children of God. Right. To those who believe in his name. Find verse 13. Who were born, not of blood, yes, yes. nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of as you take your seat, take your seat, tell your neighbor, neighbor, can I get a witness? You may be seated and be seated in the house. This morning. Love of God, I want to teach and preach on top for a few moments. One question Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? Being a person 
of faith. Can it be a consistent and constant challenge? Truth be told, if we can be honest this morning, all of us are challenged on many sides. There is the internal challenge where you are colliding with your own personal thoughts, feelings, and emotions daily. That, that's when you have a conference call with me, myself, and I. Right. Yeah. Right. Trying to figure out how you're going to get through the day. Yeah. Not only am I challenged internally, beloved, but guess what? I'm challenged externally. Yeah. Right. Daily, we are fighting the voices in our head and thoughts in our mind. And as soon as we get the, those voices under control, as soon as those voices lower the volume, there is somebody on the outside of your city who tests your patience, somebody who's trying to drive you crazy, somebody who's trying to put your faith on trial. Not knowing, not knowing you got one hand on the Bible and the other hand on the gun. Don't be quiet on me now. Don't, don't, don't push me because I'm close to the edge. I'm trying not to lose my head. It's like a jungle sometimes. It makes me wonder how I keep from going. It's not the hymn. It's not the hymn. No, it's not in the hymn. If I'm not challenged on the inside or even on the outside, watch this, y'all. There is the ever-present spiritual challenge. The spiritual challenge is where the enemy tries to make you doubt your faith and your purpose and your Savior and your God. Spiritual challenges that pull you away from reading your Bible. Spiritual challenges that seem to hit harder than anything else. Here's what I discovered, y'all. I'm not the first person to go through some challenges. And I bet you a spicy chicken sandwich, I ain't the last one. Now, Romans chapter 7, verse 21 reminds me, when I would do good, evil is present with me. But that's when Romans chapter 8 verse 37 shouts my soul and declares in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. And then I'm so glad for what it says in Philippians chapter 4 verse number 13 for the Holy Patrick's favorite scripture. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And is there anybody here who can declare that although I'm challenged internally, Although I'm challenged externally, although I'm challenged spiritually, at the end of the day, I'm going to get through this. Can I get one witness in the Mount Hebron Baptist Church who can declare, because God is with me every step of the way, because God covers me, because God loves me, because I know he watches over me, I'm going to get through this. Can I get a witness? And so beloved, and so beloved, when I'm going through in my life, when I'm going through in my life, I'm looking at God for help. Right. Yes. Uh -huh. I'm looking at God for focus. I'm looking at God for the answer on how to be a witness. Yeah. And I'm finding the answers in the New Testament Gospel of John. Here it is, Katie. The Bible still has the answers. Baby, you just got to read it. Uh, John's gospel begins with the strongest passage in the New Testament for declaring the deity of Jesus Christ. John chapter 1, verse 1. Y'all know what y'all from Sunday school. It says, in the beginning uh, was the Word, uh, and the Word uh, was with God, uh, and the Word uh, was God. Uh, this sets up a spiritual succession uh, of statements uh, to make the faith uh, solidified uh, for all who receive it. What you mean, Pastor? I can give it, uh, but brother, do you receive it? Uh, and that same chapter 1 of John, it says all things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shines in darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Let me come get you and break this thing down into bite-sized pieces. Here in the text, John is setting up descriptive language to let us know he needs a witness. Witness. And I'm telling you today, John is looking for a witness, not a witness like you or I, because we're going to mess up, not a witness like you or me, although we look good on Sunday morning, some of us messed up on Saturday evening, preach Pastor Whipple, but he needs a specific witness, not one who is situational.
seasonal, uh, but one who is intentional. Uh, not one who is seasonal, uh, but one who is unconditional. Uh, not a superstar, uh, but a servant for all. Uh, a witness uh, that increases our faith, uh, faith and refocuses uh, our belief. Uh, here's how that witness uh, was introduced to us. Let's go to the text, y'all. Verses 6 through 7 tells us of this witness. Yes. Bible says, yes. Yes. there was a man sent from God yes. Yes. whose name was John. Yes. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light yes. that all through him might believe. Yes. Okay, I'm going to get you. John is not that witness. Yes. But John is looking for the witness. Yes. Now, please understand, beloved, the world needs a witness. Right, right. Text in verse number 10. He was in the world. And the world was made through him. And the world did not know him. Y'all check this out. Jesus was in the world. As the essential word before his incarnation upholding all things. But this speaks of his being in the world when he took our nature upon him and he dwelt among us for 33 and a half years. He knew the world would reject him. He knew the world would make fun of him. He knew the world would put him on the cross. But here it is now, but the world will also reject him in a major and mighty way. Listen, it takes a strong person to keep loving you Keep encouraging you, yeah. keep providing for you yeah. after you rejected them. Yeah. I thank God for Jesus. Yeah. Now, here's the blessing in the lesson, y'all. Jesus was in the world, but not of the world. And speaks with an air of triumph when he can say, Now I am no more in it. And there have been times in our lives, Brother Gary. Where we decide not to engage in behaviors and situations of other folk that will put our faith belief in jeopardy. Uh, I thank God for Mount Hebron because we don't look like what we've been through. <laughs> and I'm telling you this morning, I don't let y'all suit fool me. I don't let y'all nice hairdos fool me. I don't let y'all design a purses fool me. Because I'm talking to some folk who can declare you've been in times in your life where you almost fell for temptation. Uh, there were times in your life where you almost lost your cool. Uh, there were times in your life where you almost had to remind folk of who you are. This power can't come off. Uh -huh. You can't, I'm not going to stand behind this instrument and let you disrespect me. There were times in your life where you took off your suit jacket uh, and don't have to see where Cherry Hill really came from, what, what West Baltimore was really all about. And let me come help you. Uh, I'm not better than anybody, uh, but if I stay in this place one more minute, uh, if I fool with y'all a little while longer, if you keep running off at the mouth, I'm going to risk losing my faith. So I got to get out of here. I don't want to show y'all my backside. So I got to get out of here. And I got to protect my witness. <laughs> now, 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 listen, listen, listen. Not only, not only does the world need a witness, but sinners need a witness. I'm in verse 12, baby. I'm in verse 12. There is the blessing that declares, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name. The text teaches that although the body of that nation persisted and, and perished in unbelief, here it is, yet there were many of them that were wrought upon to submit to Christ and many more that were not of that fault. There were some who believed and yet there were some who didn't believe. Because you know there are some folk who will come and there are some folk who will avoid. There are some folk who receive and some folk who will reject. And I'm preaching some folk in the house today who can testify I've been through too much not to believe in him. Some folk can get comfortable and act like they don't need Jesus. Uh, act like they don't believe. Uh, folk get their butt on their back. Uh, act brand new uh, and start believing in everything else but Jesus. Uh, you believe in the great spirit. Uh, you believe in the great pumpkin, Charlie Brown. Uh, 
God, you start talking to the universe. Well, baby, I'm talking to the one who made the universe. I'm talking to the one who made the earth, the moon, and the stars. You trying to burn sage. I'm trying to plead the blood. We are two different playing fields. Who are you talking about, Pastor? I'm talking about the great I am. And I still need him. I need him to strengthen me in situations when I'm weak. I still need him because some days are harder than others. I still need him because I got a flashback of yesterday and I'm trying to move forward in the name of Jesus. I still need him because I don't dot every I and cross every T. I still need him because I sometimes want to go back to the Bible. I still need him. I want to take a long way home from work sometimes. I still need him. And that's why the elders declare, I need him every hour. I need him. Oh, bless me now, my dear Savior. I come to thee. Can I get a witness who can declare, I still need God. So beloved, not only does the world need a witness, and, and sinners need a witness, but God needs you to be a witness. Uh, verse 13, y'all, uh, truly culminates this message today when it says, Who were born not of blood, not, not, not of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Dr. Kelly had Bible study right quickly. God loves us so much, beloved, that he knows about my internal struggle. God loves me so much, he knows about my external struggle. He even loves me so much, he knows that the devil is coming after me. But even in this, God gave me Jesus. And when you have Jesus, you have the strength to withstand every attack. When you have Jesus, you can overcome every struggle. When you have Jesus, you can defeat every addiction. That's why I'm encouraged in John chapter 1, verse number 13, at the B clause, where it says, but of God. See, each person must individually trust Jesus Christ for eternal life. Oh yeah, baby, I'm glad what grandmama told you. I'm glad what granddaddy sang to you. I'm glad what the deacon prayed for you. I'm glad what the preacher preached to you. But there will come a time when you gotta receive him for yourself. It is a gift to be received, not a reward achieved through any human effort. What you mean, Pastor? It didn't come from the store. You didn't get it from Amazon. You didn't get it from Walmart or Target. It didn't come off the street. You didn't get it from Branch and North Avenue. But it came from God and God alone. The elders were simply saying, but God, for thought I wouldn't make it today, but God, the illness was supposed to take me out, but God, you were supposed to feel defeated about your situation, but God, the church was supposed to be closed because of the pandemic, but God, what they said about you should have messed you up, but God, losing that job should have been the end of you, but God, should have lost my mind a long time ago. But God, things could have been a whole lot worse. But God, that broken heart should have been the death of you. But God, if that's your testimony, shout back at me and declare, but God, but God, I'm still here. But God, I got the activity of my limbs. Another day, but you don't know, like I know, what the Lord has done for me. Way back at me, and shout for God. Here it is, y'all, with all of this established to strengthen my faith. The question is, Mount Hebron, will you be a witness? Will you be a witness for who passed up for the one who? is the word of God. Will you be a witness for who passed up for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? For who passed up for the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end? He is the Lord our 
righteousness. He is the one who heals. He is the one who sets free. He is the one who delivers. And his name, and his name, and his name is Jesus. Got him messed up now. Because y'all should know by now, Mount Hebron. Hallelujah, I'm 
you, Lord, for letting me be a witness. I'm so glad that you did. Somebody shout it. Somebody shout it. And because I'm a witness, I'm going to let the world know he gave me grace. He gave me mercy. He gave me love. He gave me another. He gave me another. He gave me another. He gave me another. And another chance. And if that's your testimony, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Somebody give God praise for being a witness. Somebody give God praise for being a witness. Somebody give God praise for being a witness of God. He's not getting it. God, he's not getting it. He's not getting it. He's not finished with me yet. Somebody shout yeah. Somebody shout yeah. Somebody shout yeah. I feel a holy ghost right here. It's the night of Jesus. Open your mouth and tell God, I'll be a wreck. I'll be a wreck. I'll be a wreck. For oh, my Lord. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Clap your hands right here. Clap your hands right here. 